So uh, as Simon said, I think this is probably the most terrifying talk I've ever given in my life, but here goes. Uh, let me start by telling you a little bit about Applied Science 160. Uh, it's an introduction to software design for, that is a required course for all engineering students on campus. We teach four sections each winter session with just over 200 students per section. The computer science department teaches the first eight weeks of that course, so I'm about to describe what happens in those first eight weeks. So let me tell you the problem that I'm trying to solve by flipping the classroom. I think I'm a reasonably good lecturer. I tried hard to involve the class, but I always felt that I was lacking engagement on the students' part. It felt to me that it was always the same half dozen to dozen students that would answer questions or ask questions each class. I felt that I was failing to reach the class as a whole. The revelation for me came on October the 18th, 2007, when I attended a seminar given by Harvard physicist Eric Mazur entitled Confessions of a Converted Lecturer. He talked about shifting the focus from teaching towards helping students learn. He's returning to UBC, by the way, on June the 7th this summer. You might want to mark it on the calendar. The timing of this revelation is important. It occurred in the fall of 2007. On July 1, 2008, I had a sabbatical year coming up. Much of the development that I'm about to describe to you happened during that sabbatical year. I did not do it in my spare time. The flipped classroom was put into place in the fall of 2009, so we've been running it in this format now for four years. The transformation consists of three parts. The first part is to ask yourself, what can you reasonably expect students to learn before they come to class? These become your pre-class learning goals. Once you've identified those, you want to put resources in place that enable students to achieve those goals. If our goal is to produce independent learners, I believe that has to happen in year one on day one. We have to expect them to learn independently. The second part of the transformation is student motivation. There are many demands on students' time, and we need to put incentives in place to encourage students to meet those pre-class learning goals. I think there are a number of ways that this could be done, from online quizzes before the students come to class, to using clicker questions at the start of class. The third part of the transformation is to transform the classroom experience. I believe the class activities must be such that they cannot be learned by reading a book, they cannot be learned by watching a video, and they cannot be learned by watching someone else do it. I think they need to emphasize group work, they need to emphasize communication skills, and they need to emphasize process, all of which I think are important. So the flipped classroom in Applied Science 160 looks like this. Students are asked to study up to four short screencasts before they come to class. The class starts with three or four clicker questions to assess the pre-class learning goals. Students then work in groups of two or three on worksheets. We intersperse that by presenting solutions in the classroom and also do short demos. The sell to students is extremely important. The typical lecture-based class looks like this. We start by introducing basic definitions, theory, and concepts, and then we spend some time illustrating how that could be applied to some basic problems. Then our 50 minutes is up, and we send the students away to work on the harder problems. In the transformed classroom, we shift what happens in the classroom so that students now learn the basic definitions and theory before they come to class, so that in class we can focus not only on basic problems, but on harder problems as well. The way that I sell this to students is that they're going to get some of their homework done while they are in the classroom, and I think they really buy into that. So let me show you some survey data. We presented students with a statement, I believe the teaching methods used in this course are effective in helping me learn the concepts presented. As you can see, over 90% of students agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. We had a response rate of about 75% to the survey. Uh, DNWTA, by the way, is I do not wish to answer the question. A second statement we gave them was I would prefer that this course be taught using a traditional lecture format rather than having online screencasts and in-class problem sets. Again, we have over 85% of students disagreeing or strongly disagreeing with that statement. I think it's fair to say that students have really bought into this mode of teaching and learning. So what can I tell you about learning outcomes? At the time that I did this transformation, I did not have a standardized test like the force concepts inventory in physics available to me. So I do not have hard statistics in terms of how learning outcomes changed. However, if you look at the broad distribution of grades, I think I can fairly say that students are definitely not doing any worse using this mode of teaching than they were when I was in lecture mode. So what are the key elements to success? Uh, the screencasts are short. The average length of one of my screencasts is seven minutes, and they target specific learning goals. The in-class exercises start at the level of those pre-class learning goals, and they work to gradually more difficult problems, so it helps to build student confidence. So why is this flexible? For each screencast, we provide references to the textbook, so students who prefer to learn by reading can do so. 
For the students who do watch the screencast, they can pause, they can rewind, and they can replay. And students have often commented that they find that incredibly useful. The screencasts are also closed captioned, so those who prefer to read rather than listen can do so. And I think that's also a benefit for students who speak English as a second language. There's also some flexibility in pace. We release an entire week's worth of screencasts at a time, so students have flexibility in when they study them. And we also encourage students to work at their own pace uh, when they're working on worksheets in the classroom. And indeed, by the end of the class, we've got students at very different stages of progression through those worksheets. So could it be more flexible? I think with pre-class learning materials and worksheets in place, it's not too hard to envision providing more flexibility in the pace at which students advance through the course, particularly for those students who want to advance uh, faster through the course. I think that's certainly possible. So what are the challenges? What happens when the person teaching the course is not the person who narrated the screencasts? Who do students see as the point of authority? I think there's some very interesting questions around that. And it's fair to say that I think we've had some mixed experiences with other faculty teaching this course in our department. Another big challenge is classroom management. With over 200 students working at their own pace through problems, that's an issue. I have two uh, TAs in the class to help me out. I believe, however, that the rewards far outweigh any challenges. This approach to teaching breaks down the barriers between faculty and students, and I believe that's extremely important in first year. I am no longer tethered to the front of the room. I'm out there with the people, helping them solve problems, helping to solve individual problems that students are having. I think that's very important. So in summary, if foundational material can be delivered effectively online, and I believe that it can, we must rethink how we spend time in the classroom. And in so doing, we have an opportunity to think about providing flexibility in the way and the pace at which our students learn. Thank you.